and we are now recording. All right, good deal. Thank you, and thank you, Chris. Yeah, the um, my name is David Blewett, City Councilman for District 14, which includes Richmond Avenue that we're going to be talking about tonight. This is a open community meeting being um, put together by city staff and uh, Chris Turner was talking over was talking for a second ago and I believe that um, Robert Perez I think I saw him on this call somewhere so she's she is the city engineer and he is the director of public works and they're the primary people I believe Chris will be running the show tonight correct correct sir so this is being put on by city staff I'm here mainly because it's in my district and because it's an important project I've gotten a lot of feedback and we're going to have some more feedback I will tell you that I do have a hard stop at 630, so I will have to go, but the um, the staff will continue on the presentation. Everything you tell them will end up coming back to my office because um, I'm very well aware of the challenges that this street has with the width and with the things that we're trying to do and some of the concerns, well, all of you that are here, the concerns that all of you have. So I will keep my comments short because I do want to get as much of the presentation in as possible so I can... Um, leave it like I said my hard stop and with that Chris I appreciate the opportunity to listen to this is our second community meeting correct yes it is sir okay so I'll let you take uh, take it away from here and thank you all for being here tonight this is like I said a, an incredibly important street east west to connect other north south streets and neighborhoods together um, I take this very serious to me I think it's I think it is the biggest street uh, reconstruction that I face just because of the importance of what it can do for the East Dallas neighborhoods. So Chris, thank you. Thank you, council member. With that, I'll come back and uh, allow city staff to introduce themselves, starting with um, Robert Perez. Hey, good. Uh, my name is Robert Perez, uh, Director of Public Works. Thank you all for being here this evening. And then let's go with Haitham. Good evening, everyone. My name is Haitham Hassan. I'm an assistant city engineer. I work with Chris and Robert with Public Works. Thank you. And then Dia. I'm Dia Tony. Good, good evening. Uh, I'm the city. Uh, I'm the project manager uh, at the city side. And then transportation staff. I believe we have Catherine. Yeah, this is Catherine. Right? Thank you, planner. Department of Transportation, and it looks like I also have Jessica Scott here with me. Uh, Jessica Scott, I'm the Bicycle Mobility Manager for the City of Dallas. Yeah, other than Ryan, are there other city staff on the line that I've missed? Okay, with that, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the presentation. Yeah, oh, I and, am uh, actually. Sorry about that, Chris. Just briefly, um, if we could, for the users that we have on uh, calling in uh, on conference call, um, for record keeping purposes, what we're going to do is uh, go one by one and say the last four digits of the phone number. And if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and tell us your name so that way we have it for the record. Um, up first, I see a 9591. Nine uh, two one four nine five nine one. Uh, could you uh, state your name? Okay. Uh, moving on to six three zero six. Okay. We'll move on to the next number. Uh, five five three six. If you could state your name for us for uh, record keeping. Marie Rowley. All right, thank you, Marie. Uh, up next, I see a 6591. Julianne Bowersock. Thank you for that. Uh, let's see, uh, 7077. Yes, Kevin Fry, F-R-Y-E. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, we have a 1390. Monique Jeanette. Thank you, Monique. Uh, we have a 4379. Rita uh, Bowers talk. Thank you, Rita. Uh, up next, we have a uh, 2818. 
My name is Robert Graham. Thank you, Robert. And the last number I see there is a 7989. Randolph Spring, S-P-R-E-N-G, 6213, 6215 Richmond Avenue. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Um, okay, and then I see we have one more number added in. Um, uh, whoever is 9412, if you could state your uh, name for record keeping purposes for the meeting. Kara Hernandez. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, Chris, you can go ahead. All right. Thank you all. Just to conserve bandwidth, I did turn my camera off. Um, I don't want to cut out in the middle of the presentation, so I apologize about that. But just to let you know, we do we are doing audio and video recording so that we have a record of this meeting that we will post on the website when the meeting is done. And as Ryan did, he just went through to basically collect the names of the folks that are only for that only have their phone numbers showing. We will use the attendance list as a record of who was actually um, at the meeting. So we'll have the list of attendees. But when we only have your phone number, we're just trying to get your name to associate with that phone number. So questions and answers, as Ryan mentioned, it would be helpful if you could submit your questions and comments via the chat box. The questions will be reviewed by our team and a response prepared by the end of the presentation. If we do need to provide a more detailed response, a response will be posted to our project website within 30 days. If you've called into this meeting and wish to submit questions or comments, you can email Dia at the email address you see here or Ryan at the email address you see there. And submit a question. And if we could please have everyone mute their microphones, it would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. And for those of us on conference call, if you uh, don't have a mute function, uh, you're, you're going to want to press star six on your keypad, and that'll keep you from uh, posting any audio. Thank you. So our agenda for the meeting tonight, we're going to talk about the general project information. We're going to talk about the feedback we received from the October 29th, 2020 public meeting. We'll speak about refined improvement options for the roadway, other potential project elements, how you provide your input, next steps, and then contact information for the project. So looking at the project, this project is located on Richmond Avenue between Abrams and Matilda Street. And just looking at the average daily traffic on the roadway, we do have 6,500 vehicles per day as of July 2016, and 6,100 um, vehicles per day were recorded in 2019. The 2017 bond project did approve funds to do a pavement overlay on Richmond between Matilda and Abrams Road at about $1.275 million. The intent of the project is to include bike lanes, physical bump outs at designated street crossings, enhanced painted crosswalks and new flashing beacons at selected crosswalks dependent upon funding and approval guidelines. The Richmond and Skillman intersection will also be reconstructed to remove the channelized right turn lanes and install the new traffic signal. And there's about $350,000 in the budget for that. So at our October 29th, 2020 meeting, we did have a public survey that basically we ask you five primary questions. Um, the first one being, what do you like about Richmond Avenue? The second, what should the primary goal be for the project? The third being, what's your connection with Richmond Avenue? The last question was, what other improvements would you like to see made to Richmond between Matilda and Abrams? And then we had preliminary improvement options one through five. So we're going to talk a little bit about what the feedback we received from the survey was. So we had 314 responses that came in. There were 37 that were very obvious duplicates. So we had 277 total responses. And regarding the question of what do you like about Richmond Avenue, some of our most popular responses were not much and nothing. We had about a total of 27 of those. Um, being able to park on both sides of the street and street parking, we had about 30 responses there. A lot of folks talked about the neighborhood and the community, about 27 responses. And then we had about 19 responses regarding a wide street. Looking at question number two, what should the primary goal be for this project? 
we had provided five options. The first one being slow traffic. The second one improved safety. The third improved the appearance of Richmond. The fourth being to provide options for alternative modes of travel, such as biking, scooters, and et cetera. And the last one being other, which required people to enter text. So what was very interesting, and if you can see my cursor moving here, is that about 40% of the respondents actually put all of the above, which probably should have been an option that we put here, but you guys made it up and did it yourself. We had 18% that indicated they wanted to slow traffic, 10.83% the options for alternative modes of traffic, 8.66% to improve safety, 5.78% to improve the appearance. Now, one thing that was very interesting was that about 10.83% of the respondents indicated they want a dedicated parking on both sides of the roadway. And then we also had about 4.33% of the respondents indicated they wanted a smooth street. So those were some of the ones that when people were entering text that we were able to really hone in on about dedicated parking and smooth the street. Looking at question three in terms of what is your connection to Richmond Avenue, the options that we provided were you worked within two blocks of Richmond, you lived within two blocks of Richmond, commuted using Richmond, or you visited businesses along Richmond, and then there was an other category that required you to enter text. And interestingly enough, 16.61% of the respondents made up their own category that you live on Richmond. And if you look, we had 58.84% of the respondents respond that they lived within two blocks. 16.61% said they lived on the street. And totaling these two numbers, it's 75% of the respondents either live within two blocks or are on the street. So what this tells us is we really captured the audience that we were looking for. Um, we captured the folks that live on Richmond and that are part of this project. And that was really what we wanted to achieve as part of the survey is getting the input from the folks that this is really going to impact the most. So what other improvements would you like to see along Richmond? There were quite a few um, comments on here, but some of the main ones, um, physical traffic calming elements such as speed tables, concrete bump outs and speed humps. We had 81 folks ask for that. We had 22 respondents indicate dedicated parking on both sides of the roadway. Dedicated bike lanes was another popular one with about 35 um, respondents. Continuous and wider sidewalks had about 12 folks. 17 folks talked about crosswalks, and then 61 folks indicated landscaping. So looking at the preliminary improvement options that we provided at the last meeting, we had five options just to remind you. So we'll go through these um, one by one. So option one was really no change, which leaves it with two 13 foot travel lanes and the two nine foot parking lanes on the sides. Option two, was protected street parking on both sides of the roadway with shared bike lanes. Option three provided one side parallel parking and designated bike lanes. Option four provided one side parallel parking and designated bike lanes, but that bike lane was parking protected, which indicated that the parking lane right here was between the drive lane and that bike lane. And the last option had one side parallel parking and one side designated cycle track bike lanes. So what we'd asked respondents to do was to go through and respond one through five if they um, wanted the cross section, yes or no. So the feedback that we got, um, the no's are the blue columns and the yeses are the orange columns. So overwhelmingly out of our 277 respondents, no one wants the roadway to remain as it is. Um, option two also wasn't super popular in terms of the protected street parking on both sides with the shared bike lanes. Um, option three with the one side parallel parking and the designated bike lanes was our most popular option. And then four and five were a little bit less popular. 
Now, what we did after we received all this feedback and, and you know, condensed it was we looked at what most people were looking for, which was one side parallel parking and designated bike lanes, not parking protected. But the other thing that we had to look at was we got a lot of comments regarding the parking and not taking the parking away. So what we've done is we've provided some refined improvement options. Option A is protected street parking on both sides with shared bike lanes. And basically, this is the former option two that we presented to you during the round one public engagement. When we went through and looked at different typical sections, we looked at every possible way that we could try and provide parking on both sides of the roadway along with bike lanes. And there just is not enough real estate between the curbs to be able to safely make that happen. So option B that we came up with is one side parallel parking and buffered bike lanes, not parking protected, which this is a variation and very similar to option three that was presented during round one. But the changes that have been made is that the travel lanes have been reduced to 10 and a half feet each. We've introduced basically two and a half foot buffers on both sides between the bike lanes and the travel lanes. And then we have this eight foot parking lane. So we do have a survey that we're going to be um, requesting that you fill out as part of this meeting. And basically you're going to have an option to choose option A or option B. And again, what we're trying to achieve is basically the only way that we can put parking on both sides of the roadway and still maintain traffic is to basically provide a shared travel lane and um, bicycle lane and provide those two parking lanes on both sides. If dedicated parking lane or excuse me, dedicated bicycle lanes are what are desired, we're only able to provide parking on one side of the roadway. So another part of the survey will ask if option B, if this option is the one that is selected for the project, do you prefer to have parking on the north side of the street or the south side of the roadway? So we're looking to make sure we have input on that. So the other potential project elements that we discussed at our last meeting, we have the rectangular rapid flashing beacons, which these are directional high intensity lights that are visible at all hours to make crosswalks more visible. We have speed tables, which are flat top speed humps covering the entire width of the roadway and when outfitted with crosswalk markings and signage, the speed table becomes a raised crosswalk essentially. And then we have curb bump outs, which these are traffic calming measures, which widen the sidewalk for a short distance and it will reduce the crossing distance and allow pedestrians and drivers to see each other better when parked vehicles are otherwise blocking visibility. So looking at these um, potential project elements, looking back the symbols, this symbol right here is the symbol for a speed table. So we're looking at placing speed tables at Cecile right here, and then placing one at Alderson over here. Looking at the RRFB symbol, that's the one right down here. We're looking at placing an RRFB at Del Mar right here. And then looking at bump outs, if we come from east to west, we're looking at a bump out at Kidwell Street. We're looking at bump outs at Alderson, at Empire Drive, at Cecile Street, at Concho Street, at Del Mar, and then at Matilda Street. So those are the proposed um, traffic calming elements that we have in the project. Then we are, as I mentioned, um, redoing the Richmond and Skillman intersection. Currently, this intersection, if you look east and you're going east, has a free flow right turn lane that goes onto Skillman. And if you're coming west, you have the same thing. You have a free flow right turn lane. So one of the things that we're doing as part of this project is we're eliminating those free flow right turn lanes. We're installing new barrier free ramps on all four corners. We're installing a new traffic signal. We'll have one through lane 
of traffic each direction on Richmond, and then we have our planned bicycle lanes. So we are asking for your input in terms of which refined option do you prefer? You can see we have surveys up here in English and in Spanish, and we have the QR codes here. You could actually hold your phone up to the screen right now um, and hit one of these QR codes and it will take you right to that survey. Or you have the bit.ly link here as well to refer back to. Now we are requesting or actually not requesting. It is mandatory to fill out the survey to enter an email address. And we did not do this on the last survey. We're doing it this time to try and cut down on the number of duplicate responses that we receive. So the surveys are set up in Google, so you do have to have some type of a Google account and it will ask you for an email address um, to do the survey. The deadline to provide input is March 16th. That's 10 working days from today. So again, we want your input on which option, which refined option you prefer, option A or option B. And if option B is selected for the project, do you prefer parking on the north or the south side of the road? So our next steps, we're gonna be collecting our community feedback, which as I just mentioned is due March 16th. We'll evaluate that feedback and select the preferred alternative by March 30th. We will post that preferred alternative on the project blog site by April 2nd. We'll be working through the month of April to finalize our design. That will be completed between April 23rd and April 30th. And we'll be starting construction between April 26th and April 30th. And then our construction timeline is approximately 12 months. Um, contact information for the project. As you heard, Dia is our project manager. Ryan is our public relations coordinator, and I'm our city engineer. You have our email addresses here, and here is the location for the project website as well. That is the end of the formal presentation. So with that, I'll close that out, and we will open it up for questions. Okay, okay. so, so uh, uh, I see I that see we that have, we a, have lot a lot of questions, questions in the chat, chat. Uh, but, but I also, I also saw, saw earlier Melanie, Melanie. Uh, you had your hand raised as well, so if you would like, you could go ahead and unmute yourself and make your comments or ask questions, and then we'll move on to the chat questions. Uh, yeah, I was just um, on my screen. I don't see a place to do to type in questions, so I was just going to ask for everybody. Where is that? Uh, there should be a chat window box or option that. Uh, it has an option to show or hide conversation if you have the Teams app uh, downloaded on your computer, uh, or uh, if you're coming in through a browser window, there should be a chat option available for you as well. Let me I, double check to make sure it's visible. I'm having the same issue here. I'm not getting a chat option on Teams. Got you. If you're on your phone, tap the screen and it'll show up at the top. <laughs> I'm not seeing the chat option either, and I use Teams regularly. Well, uh, while we're getting that figured out, um, if we could go ahead um, and I will try to see if I could you know, tell you exactly where that is, but I've got to do some research on the back end here. Uh, in the meantime, uh, David, I did see that you had a lot of questions that you had submitted. I don't know if uh, some of those were answered as part of the presentation, but if you uh, are available to, you could go ahead and unmute and ask some of those questions now of the staff as well. Sure, I mean, uh, Ryan, is it easier for you to read the questions or for me? It doesn't matter to me, uh, but uh, yeah, what's best for you? Uh, in this case, it might be easier for you to uh, kind of hit your questions one by one, just because I want to make sure that we get uh, for the folks who are having trouble with the chat window and making sure that that's accessible no, no, for them. So I'll be no worries. Uh, you're presenting two. The city's presenting two radically different options for Richmond's future. If you assume that the same traffic calming is done for either option, explain to us the differences between the two options. One has vehicular lanes of 13. Hey, David. Yes. David. I'm going to cut you off for one second real quick. First of all, um, 
Uh, David Chen and I have gone back and forth on this project quite a bit, so I'm, I'm not being rude, and I think we're friends on this deal, but I, I told people at the beginning I had to leave at, at 6.30 hard. So it's 6.26, and I know I know the detail you're going to get into. I just want to be very clear. I'm going to get all this information. This is very serious to me. It's very serious city staff, and I apologize for having to leave, but I wanted to be here to set this up. And David, I think I know where you're going with this, so I love you, and I know you're going to ask some great questions, and we're going to get some good answers for you. So I apologize for leaving, but um, David, thank you, and I apologize for interrupting. <laughs> no, no worries. Have a good debate. <laughs> Thanks. Um, uh, hello. 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 This is Martha Heinberg, and I'm uh, I'm in my car, and I'm phoning in because I uh, I'm on on route to getting home, but I wanted to phone in and say I am a hundred percent for the bike lanes on Richmond. Hello? Uh, yes, yes sorry. We, we heard your comments, Martha. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank do you. you live on Richmond, Martha? I do not live on Richmond. I, I live on Abrams Road with a bike lane in front of me that will adjoin the Richmond by claim once it is completed. And I think that alone is um, a, a good reason if we've got a network leading to it from our home and downtown, then uh, it would be good to continue it on Richmond. Catch. Gotcha. Well, we thank you for your for your comments. Um, we will uh, go ahead and move back. Uh, uh, David, if you wouldn't mind uh, continuing with where you left off. Oh, no worries. Um, and, and, and Martha, Sorry, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm listening. So, so, OK, the city is presenting two radically different options for Richmond's future. If you seem assume that, uh, that the same traffic common is done for either if you would please explain to us the differences between the two options. One has vehicular lanes that are 13 feet wide, which is wider than interstate highway vehicular lanes. The other has 10 and a half foot lanes. How does that affect traffic speeds and safety? The second big difference is you have buffered bike lanes versus sharrows, which are shingle, single traffic lanes that are shared by bikes and cars. Again, safety for bicyclists and cars. Third, parking volumes on Richmond. I know that a parking study wasn't done, but my informal parking study has shown no more than 55 parked cars on Richmond at any one point in time. Is is one sided of, of of one side one sided street parking adequate for that number? That's my first question. And I realize it's a long and complicated one. Thank thank you for acknowledging that, David. <laughs> Um, David, I, I've got a question for for your informal um, for your informal parking study. Uh, what stretch of Richmond was included in that? Was that uh, I, from I, uh, Matilda to Abrams, or was it? Just yeah, no, I, I I would ride Matilda to Abrams at varying times of day and night uh, because I was curious. I mean, I'd ride at seven o'clock in the morning to see what we had for overnight traffic. I'd ride at I'd, I'd ride at midnight to see uh, who was parked there overnight. I'd ride at two o'clock in the afternoon or or uh, nine o'clock in the morning. And I did this it, again, it's, it's, this is nothing empirical except for my numbers. And uh, for example, last Tuesday night at midnight, there were 36 cars parked on Richmond between Abrams and Matilda. There were 20 cars between Abrams and Skillman and 16 cars between Skillman and Matilda. Uh, of the 20 cars between Abrams and Skillman, eight of them were parked in front of an apartment complex at, at, at Richmond and Alderson. Uh, the next afternoon at 4.30 in the afternoon, there were 44 cars parked on Richmond. Does okay, that I just wanted to clarify. Oh, no worries. Yeah, no, I, 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 tried, I, I tried to be consistent in the area. Uh, and, and again, I was counting, I, I was making no designation and counting between north side and south side. It was just sheer numbers. Got it. And just a and David, I'll really just quickly yes work, but as a question for you, do you think that COVID has led to a decrease in the amount of parked cars on Richmond 
compared to what it would have been in 2019? No, not at all. I actually think that COVID uh, has has contributed to more cars parked on Richmond than less because of the number of people who are who are working from home. Uh, I, I do also think that there's a marked difference in cars parked overnight versus cars parked during the day. Car, there's there are more cars consistently parked during the day on Richmond than at night. Just to pause really quickly for those folks who are on desktop computers, there should be a chat button option that you can click on and you can see the the chat that should pull up onto your main screen. But I will say that I'm currently on Chrome as my desktop browser, so it may not function on uh, Firefox or other uh, browser types. So that might be where you're running into an issue. On the last meeting, there were issues with people not seeing the chat. I had that issue. Um, I signed out of the meeting. I signed back in and then it seemed to appear for me. So if anybody wants to join or try that, it might help. Yep, absolutely. If you'll try that as well, if you're still not able to see chat, it might uh, refresh for you there. Uh, now, was there anyone or sorry, David, uh, did you did staff go ahead and address those questions or did uh, we have uh, other parts? Yeah, yeah, we got well? a chat. If you'd like me to, I'd certainly try if I can get a word in edgewise. Yeah, I think that this guy's a uh. So essentially, basically the two cross sections and the two options that we've presented. Um, we presented one with protected bike lanes, which from bicyclist standpoint and a bicyclist safety standpoint is always going to be a preferred option. Um, we included the option to have the sharrows and the parking on both sides because essentially as part of question number two nearly 11 percent of the respondents indicated they wanted parking on both sides of the roadway and when that was one of the things that people filled in it was something folks felt was important enough to mention and bring up several times and actually enter that text in for us so it was something that folks felt strong enough about to mention, um, as I said, 11% of the respondents on that question felt it was important enough to mention. Um, we saw that recurring theme through um, the results of the survey. So that is why one of the options that we included was to have the shared bike lanes. Um, as far as vehicular traffic, um, you know, traveling faster in wider lanes versus not wider lanes. Some of that is dependent upon what else is in the vicinity. You know, we're looking at still doing improvements for bump outs. We're looking at doing improvements for crosswalks and those type of things that will still slow down traffic. You know, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't predict, you know, is traffic going to go 10 miles per hour slower if they have a 10 and a half foot lane versus a 13 foot lane? I don't know, David. I can't predict that. Um, any improvements that we make are going to improve the situation. Oh, understand. Uh, I could, uh, I, I, I've sent you information from NACTO and what they say about wider lanes versus narrower lanes. I was asking for a traffic engineer's uh, rec um, 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 uh, um, um, observation. Uh, if you're quoting numbers, um, if you look at um, um, design in, in the uh, design options where you chose either yes or no, you did have the option for more choices than simply one. But in that, option two had 208 decided no's and only 69 decided yeses. There were three times in that option, there were three times more people who said no to option two than said yes to option two. Comment? Yes, David, but what you couldn't see was that a lot of the yeses on three, four, and five were conditional upon not losing parking on both sides of the roadway. Those I understand. Those the comments but, but, you couldn't see. I understand, but I, but, I, but, but, but I wasn't commenting on, on options three, four, and five, simply on option two. Option two is yes or no, and you had 208 decided no's and only 69 decided yeses. 
But the point I'm trying to make is if both side, if two sided parking cannot be provided in any option, but option two. So the conditional yeses on three, four and five were that parking needed to be provided on both sides of the roadway. And the only option that can do that is option number two, which is why it is still an option. I mean, I'll just speak as, as one Mark, individual. One last, one last thing in terms of numbers. You're talking 30 people. You're talking 10% of the total respondents. Uh, um, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. You're, you're talking only 10% of the total respondents uh, saying that they want bike lane, uh, that they want parking on both sides. Is that correct? On that particular question, there were other comments made. Oh, un understand. I'm, I, I'm talking about um, all questions. Question one, two. Uh, and and four, uh, the total number of respond the maximum number of, of of people who even wrote in bike lane. Uh, I'm sorry, two sided parking. The the total number on question one there were thirty, on question four there were twenty two, and if you had two hundred and seventy seven respondents, that equates to only ten percent of the total number of respondents. Yeah, am, I, I, am I misreading that? Can I can I make a point on that too though, just to kind of compound if if only seventeen percent of the respondents were on Richmond. Even if, even if that is the case, most of the yeses or or whatever you know the 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 option three, I guess you're you're not getting a sample of those impacted by the parking issue in this survey. You've got less than fifty people impacted from the survey for, on the parking issue. As, as I indicated, between the folks that live within two blocks of Richmond and the folks that live on Richmond, that was 75% of the respondents. So we did capture the audience that we were trying to capture um, with the survey. But you, you're only ca capturing a portion of the people impacted by the parking issue, though, a very small portion. I do understand that. And we've done the maximum amount of outreach that we can do. I mean, we're we're here having public meetings. You know, we're posting on Nextdoor. Um, you know, lots of folks have been talking to all of your neighbors. I know you've been talking to all of your neighbors as as you as a group. Um, all all I can ask you all to do is to respond to the survey. Just one last point on that. I mean, my my perspective changes on this. Even if I live on Belmont, I mean, if I if I live on Richmond. Took him out. Mm, Brian, I think he just bike. froze on it. Oh, there we go. Oh, I guess my point is on the survey. I know we want to make a decision for the greater good here, but my perspective would change if I lived on, on Belmont and I'm a biker because I want to bike lane on Richmond where I don't live, but I do happen to live on Richmond. So I want to be able to park in front of my house. So address how you're kind of accounting for these different perspectives. And I feel like the parking issue is really not captured in this survey because you've got so few respondents that actually live on the street. We're taking the information that we're getting and we are condensing it and then we're taking it. To, we will take it to management and have a discussion um, over what section management feels is the appropriate section um, based on the data that we have. One one question I had was just looking at option B. It appears that the parking lane is eight feet versus in option A, the parking lanes are nine feet. Um, if we take into account two eight foot parking lanes and a two foot buffer, it would seem like we could have a bike lane, two parking lanes and two travel lanes all fit in there. Is there a reason why we can't reduce the parking lane to eight foot on both sides? Sir, the team has looked at the, the team has looked at this geometry every which way and we could not find a safe way to put in bike lanes and parking on both sides and have buffers and be able to fit everything that needed to fit in the cross section between these curbs. OK, so what you're saying is there are other considerations not in here with regard to geometry. Yes. yes. Uh, so I saw that Michael Massey, I saw that you had your hand raised earlier and I apologize uh, that we weren't able to get to you uh, a little bit sooner. If everyone would, before we unmute and start making comments, I would highly 
request that you please use the hand raise feature if you can so that way we can keep everything moving slowly moving forward and we don't have people jumping over each other i know everyone wants to get get their say in and have their their questions and that sort of thing but we gotta it's all virtual so we're gonna run into technical issues here and there and i, I appreciate your patience with that uh so michael if you would go ahead um a couple quick points i'll, I'll try to be brief um in regards to the survey that was filled out um david's question about the number of no's, I can only respond my personal uh, way that I took the survey. I looked at the options for half a day and then I filled out the survey and then I went to the meeting and ideas were being discussed and it kind of changed the way that I thought about it, but the survey was already over. So I probably was one of the ones that put a no in the survey for item number for uh, number two but since then, I think my mind has changed. And, and I felt at some point during that first meeting, there was kind of a wave of, uh, at least that was my take on it, was a wave of opinions in the chat and in the discussion when we realized that there was no other option to keep parking on both sides. A lot of people seemed to kind of sway uh, away from favor of the bike lanes. Now, that's just my opinion uh, on how I felt that meeting was going. But since there hasn't been another survey till now, I don't know how accurate those results are. In terms of living on Richmond versus nearby, I didn't write in that I lived on Richmond because I, I didn't choose to, to write in my own text. I, I do live within two blocks. I'm on the, you know, ground zero. I'm on Richmond, but it's also can technically within two blocks. So some of the data in that I'm going to take with a grain of salt. Onto the bike lanes versus uh, versus parking. Um, I have never, I haven't had anybody come over to my house in a year. Uh, but during the normal course of a year pre-COVID, uh, we would have guests come by. Uh, there's deliveries, there's garbage trucks, there's other things. Um, when I look at the option with bike lanes, I feel like we're going to put uh, bikes at risk because cars, uh, delivery trucks, landscapers are still going to move to that side of the road. So bikes will have to swerve around them. Cars and drivers and the mentality of the access from Matilda to Abrams, I don't think will change. And so when I'm just trying to pull over to the side of the road to get ready to come in my driveway, cars zip around, speed around me. Now, maybe speed bumps will, will help them to slow down. But if there's no traffic in the bike lane, and, and there's a gap in traffic in the oncoming way, cars are still going to speed around whatever's in their way, I, I feel. So even if there's a bike lane, I, I, cars are going to stop there, and then bikes and oncoming traffic are going to be making passes, uh, whereas if you had dedicated parking and a Sharrow lane, well, I'm not an expert on Sharrows, but if you had dedicated parking and vehicular traffic lanes, uh, there may not be as much need to speed around. Final point, and I'll get off. On Matilda, I feel like the bike lanes are 99% empty. I, I rarely see people using them. And so when I drive down there, I now feel as a driver that I have 10 feet to my left and five extra feet to my right, where I, I don't have obstructions, I don't have obstacles that I have to pay as close attention to. Even though there's a painted lane, I, I rarely see it occupied. I would fear that if we did that on Richmond, the high speed traffic of people trying to cut through already would see empty bike lanes um, and the two and a half foot buffers between the traffic and the bike lane <clears throat> find that more of an open highway. Even if you painted the lines to 11 feet or 10 and a half, um, visually, uh, I feel like I slow down more when I see parked cars um, than I do when I see an empty bike lane. Now, if bike traffic increases in the city, changes things, I just I don't know about that. So I'm going to sign off. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I will say, uh, Michael, to address the comments on the survey itself, one of the things uh, uh, additionally in noticing that we had a, uh, a fair amount of duplicate submissions and we're requiring sign-ins now at this point, another thing that we, a problem that you brought up is that, you know, people who had come at to the meeting and filled it out afterwards, perhaps had a different perspective once they had that information as to those who filled it out initially before. So as part of that, uh, that's why we're introducing the survey 
now after the meeting and that's when we're going to publicize it as well as uh, introducing uh, additional questions at the start so that we can filter the data down to see um you know responses we're getting from folks who have attended these meetings who are you know are getting the information or making those uh, informed decisions versus those who may not attend the meeting but might still you know want to share their two cents um moving forward uh i did see uh travis richards had his hand raised as well so travis if you go ahead and unmute yeah, thank you very much. Um, I guess to say a couple of questions for Christina. Um, the first is I, th I think that a very common theme among all of our concerns, regardless of which option we prefer, is safety and the speed that we typically see people driving. Something I didn't see included in the plans was um, additional four-way stop signs at cross streets that might it would probably help to slow traffic and then also hopefully deter a lot of the commercial traffic and the pass-through traffic that we see on Richmond. And so I wanted to know if that had been considered and if, or if it was an option as part of the plan. And uh, the second question is, I didn't know if in y'all's estimates about the amount of traffic and parking that we're going to be seeing on Richmond, if y'all had considered the new uh, apartment complex. And so I, I I think I saw something that's going to be another six to 800 people that are going to be living right there at Richmond and Matilda. And so I, I don't know what effect that would have, but I just wanted to know if that was something that y'all had considered. And so uh, stop signs and the apartment, just wanted to know if y'all thought about those. Um, in terms of looking at, at four-way stops, in order to put in a four-way stop, we have to do a specific traffic study for that. With being in the middle of, with being in the middle of COVID, traffic patterns are not the same as they would have been a year to year and a half ago. So a lot of the traffic studies that we may have typically done have been put on hold. It is something that we can look at and we can approach and, and do with um, our transportation department and look at some of these intersections. It is not something we've done up to this point, basically because traffic patterns are not normal right now, as many of you have noted. Um, regarding the apartment complex, that is going to likely increase traffic on Richmond, which is yet even uh, an additional reason to keep the lanes at 10 and a half feet on the option B as we proposed to give that extra half a foot for safety purposes. Um, traffic on Richmond, um, as we said in the presentation, is about 6,100 vehicles a day as of 2019. Um, we don't have any more current counts than that because of circumstances and again, COVID. And I hate to use the COVID excuse and I've really tried not to, but in this circumstance, when it comes to traffic patterns, there's not a lot I can say other than COVID. Um, so yes, we do expect traffic's going to increase with the apartment complex. Um, you know, whether they go west, whether they come east, um, you know, we can't really say right now, but we do anticipate it's going to increase and even more urgent why we get our traffic calming measures down to try and calm the traffic down and lower the speed. Uh, just a quick follow up question on that is that um, as it relates to the traffic studies and uh, what it would take for us to, I mean, I understand that right now things are not normal, but um, who, who is the proper contact that those of us in the neighborhood should um, contact just to make sure that it's not something that kind of slips through that we can make sure that it gets addressed whenever the time is right. And I'm sorry, I have something oh. to add. When is normal or non COVID supposed to to end so that these type of studies could be done? I'm just curious because I don't know that it will end. And I think <laughs> traffic patterns have changed because people are working from home. Um, and they've already adjusted. Um, so I'm, I'm curious what the shift in traffic patterns or if it's going to change. What is that? Into, uh, what information do you have to give me insight into that? Hey, Catherine, are you still on the line? I am. And sorry, don't mind the cooking sounds in my background. Um, I was just thinking about that. And um, I think one of our sources is um, regional travel models and um, 
and traffic studies that they're doing right now and tracking that on a monthly basis. And it has been trending back up to normal, but um, that's something that we're going to be monitoring going forward just to see. I mean, we can, we are not in the medical industry. I don't think we can forecast that ourselves, but I would, I mean, I think trends are looking like in the next year, but you know, we can't really say. Well, just to give you a little bit of insight, I used to drive to Farmers Branch every day and my office just just let go of their lease and I'm going to work from home forever. So I do think that this new normal is happening and is now. Um, and so I think that should be taken into consideration when we're looking at should we do a traffic study for a stop sign? Um, this is just my opinion, but I'm just throwing it out there and I would really like to understand when a reasonable time would be to request that study about a stop sign. Thanks. And Catherine, I don't know if the transportation department has started doing those studies yet or not. We really haven't. Um, and we, I mean, we just did traffic counts over on Gaston and they were still 20% less than last year. So we are still shying away from that. Uh, I think you'll they, probably see that continue to be less mm -hmm. due to the people working from home, but that's just my insight. Thank you. We appreciate that. Before we move on to the next uh, hand wave, I'm going to go ahead just to make sure we're not losing some of these chat questions. And I'll kind of, it's on the same thread. Uh, Steve Youngblood asked, uh, if parking is, is removed from one side, how do we envision that impacting delivery service vehicles, uh, you know, coming to people's homes without it affecting the traffic flows, i.e. FedEx, UPS, Amazon, et cetera. And then also in the same vein, how would, and this may not be something we necessarily have an answer to, but uh, do we know if uh, trash and bulk trash service would be impacted as part of the, the street change? Um, hi, Thumb, would you mind taking the question about the bulk trash pickup? Because I know you had looked into that already a little bit for me. Uh, yes, we did actually. Uh... I guess west of the Skillman, the trash pickup is uh, right now the people are putting their trash cans on the street, which is in front of the curb. So that would be an issue. We will have to somehow maybe uh, have the people uh, put the trash cans on the sidewalk or the parkway, which is behind the curb. Otherwise, it will be an issue with the bike lanes. So that will have to change the way it's been, do been done in the last the past. So I guess the, the main the main change will be people will have to put the trash cans in the parkway and not on the street if bike lanes are going to be on that side or the parking is going to be removed. Got you. Yeah. Um, I see we have a couple more hands raised and I'm uh, unfortunately I'm going to go ahead and skip over uh, Travis and Melanie, just because I know that we had some comments from you earlier. Actually, uh, Melanie, yours was specifically on just the, the features of Teams, but if you would uh, go ahead, if you had any comments about the streets uh, now. I'm sorry, can I jump in and clarify my question real quick? This is Steve Youngblood. You you just read oh, my question. Uh, yeah, yeah. Clarify my question real quick. Yeah. Uh, regarding, well, first of all, to, to clear up why we put our trash cans in the street, because I was specifically yelled at by the uh, trash pickup guy to put it in the street, I guess, because the street dips towards the curb and the, cr you know, the crane or whatever, the, the, the lever could not pick up the trash cans. He was literally breaking my curb apart over several years with the little crane thing. So the curb in front of my house is now destroyed from him trying to pick up the trash cans when it was in my median. So he, he, he actually yelled at me and told me to put it in the street. Um, but actually, so the question though really is if, the parking is moved to one side of the street and i'm assuming because i walked the six thousand block of my of, of richmond um several times looking at the cars uh, especially on a saturday afternoon um but throughout the last several months um so the six thousand block has quite a few cars so if we move those to one side um i'm assuming that those who have the cars parked in front of them would have no place to put their trash so as it is, I will have my bulk trash out there and it will get skipped because somebody has parked in front of my house from across the street or from the next down, you know, from the house down or, or whatever. So, um, you know, my bulk trash will be left out there for two months 
Um, the same with trash. If I can't put my trash can out because all the cars are now on one side of the street, then how, how would they get to my trash cans? And then it also on the other side of the street, you know, there's the bike lanes and stuff. So, um, you know, I don't know how, you know, you put the trash cans out in the bike lanes or, or how that would work. But, um, and that, and that's the same vein, as you said, with the delivery trucks as well. But, um, uh, so yeah, that's, that's specifically really what I was getting at. Gotcha. Thank you, Steve. Um, we'll go ahead and Melanie, uh, unmute and ask your question or make a comment. Thank you. I, uh, I think that, uh, in either option, the, the, the biggest problem with Richmond is that the travel lanes are too wide. So the, the best thing that we could do and, uh, engineering st studies support this is to narrow those lanes and, uh, whether it's bar, uh, bike lanes or parking, if if the narrowing only happens with the proposed rubber bump outs, then uh, you know cars can just as easily run over the little rubber bump outs. So also in design studies, um, and Abrams is a, an example uh, locally if you want to go look, but concrete bump outs are by far the safest narrowing device uh, because uh, the cars can't uh, drive over them. The drivers get used to where the new curb is. It, they protect um, parallel parking. They, they very effectively narrow and shorten the, uh, they shorten the crosswalks. So either, um, you know, any, any kind of pedestrian, uh, a wheelchair user, a bike user, they they have an elevated uh, concrete curb to stand on. They can see the cars, the cars can see them, and the and they are in a protected location. The the rubber um, curbs proposed don't do any of those. Um, they don't have those benefits. So I I if the concrete bump outs in my mind are by far the most important um, uh, way to, to narrow the street safely. And they, they provide so many more benefits to help um, narrow the street and slow down the traffic. So uh, they, they can, you know, storm water is not a problem. I'm, I'm a designer. I've done streetscapes. I've done park lanes. I've done projects just like this. And concrete bump outs are the safest route to go because they just provide a safe refuge for pedestrians crossing the street. And the street, this project is not just about people moving down Richmond. It's about people crossing Richmond and getting to the park and to Lakewood Shopping Center and to neighbors across the street. So I would just really um, hope that concrete bump outs would be more strongly considered. Thanks. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, I see up next with the hand raise, we have uh, Nick Mogensen. And then after that, we'll go ahead and see if we can address some more of the chat questions. So Nick, if you go ahead and unmute. Yeah, hey, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, so uh, just want to say really happy with what you guys have drafted right now as far as uh, speed tables and bump outs in the eastern part of the street. Um, as you know, I turned in that petition that my neighbors and I put together to try and get some of those features. And I just want to know, I saw comments from other neighbors that live maybe further west along Richmond Avenue that are also interested in the, the RRFPs uh, or Bs and the um, the speed tables and i was just wondering how will you guys determine in the end you know how many of those are allocated where they go um, if it changes from the proposal you put up on the screen between now and construction um, if you could just speak to that a little bit it's a combination of working with our transportation department and looking at um the traffic volumes that are a little bit off right now because of covid but it's primarily working in conjunction with our transportation department, looking at the geometry of the intersections and then just making those final determinations. 
Um, once we have a final plan, we will post it on the blog. So in April, um, along with um, the typical section, we'll post that in the beginning of the month, but closer to the end of the month when we have our final um, plans prepared, we'll go ahead and repost a diagram similar to what we have in the presentation showing where the features are going to be, if that would work for your, all of you. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I, I appreciate that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, before we move to the next hand raise, I do see a question that uh, just popped up that I think uh, would be helpful to address. Uh, again, coming from Michael, uh, why does option A maintain the 13 or 13 foot wide travel lane? Why not widen the parking and extend the bump out slightly, thereby reducing the travel lane width? Hey, Catherine, do you want to jump in on any of these lane width typical section questions? Sure, I, I would be happy to. Um, well, I think the reason that it normally isn't extended, I mean, nine feet is really pushing it. Um, I think the reason it normally isn't extended further than that is because it can become a hazard for vehicles in the travel lane. There starts to become a bigger gap between the cars parked along the curb and the cars moving in the travel lane. The cars in the travel lane might start to drift closer to the cars along that are parked and so might not be prepared for the bump outs as they approach them. Um, it's really just based on national guidance, but I think that's kind of the reasoning behind it. Got you. Thank you for that. Uh, and then I see our uh, last hand raised right now. I was going to ask why can't, can you can you look at that that modification? We can look and see if there are any modifications to that that can be made to this. But I'm not anticipating that we're going to widen that parking lane any based on the the comment from Catherine. Up next, we have a uh, hand raised uh, by, uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, Trion and Seth. Yes, it's you. <laughs> yes, it's me. You said it correctly. Thank you. Uh, and thank you all for, for putting this together and going through this. I know this has been a long endeavor, and I know that we've been re referencing COVID throughout it, but I know that this has been going on for a few years. So it, um, I know it's been, it's been a lot of conversations. And I go a little bit back and forth on what I think. I do live on Richmond, um, and I, I, I park on Richmond. I have you know, two teenage girls. Um, watch out they're driving on the roads so um the the, the part I, I'm, that makes me a little bit like i can't quite figure it out is because the two options are so drastically different and um it feels a little bit so in psychology it feels a little bit like you're forcing the hand and so i it seems like there'd be something that's a combination of both of them and i do understand um geometry and i understand basic math um, and so I, I'm curious as to the question that was asked earlier around having one bike lane and the, the buffer of that lane. So is it either or is it parking on both sides and having a co-biking and co-vehicle lane or having two bike lanes and parking on one side. It, and so I know that you answered the question earlier saying you look at the geometry, but I, I, I still don't understand it. So if you can maybe go over that with me. Is, is there, I'll ask it again. Is the requirement two bike lanes? And does the buffer, is it is it two and a half feet is the requirement? Because the math is if it was two feet in one bike lane, you'd be able to accommodate everyone on this call, it seems like. OK, we cannot put if if you're asking and I think maybe I think I might have read this in the chat. If you're asking, can we put essentially one five foot or six foot bike lane in to accommodate two way bicycle traffic? No, we absolutely cannot. 
Um, I'm going to I'm going to thumb up here in this presentation here. Basically, option oh, if I go the right direction, that would help. Um, our former option five showed basically a cycle track, whereas we would combine the two bike lanes into one location. But basically, in order to do that, we have to have 11 feet of space to make that happen. OK, because that math bike. makes sense. I didn't understand that from earlier. So the, the two bike lanes is having bike lane go both directions in that right. on the space. Yeah. yeah, bicyclists are similar to cars. We can't have them traveling in the same lane, you know, coming at each other because they'll they'll collide head on. We can't basically put them in a position where they have to play chicken with each other. <laughs> for lack of better terms. Right, I got you. <laughs> OK. So thank you for, for answering that question. Okay. Yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, and I saw, and I see that you also have a lot of uh, questions in the chat, but I saw Amy uh, that you had your hand raised a little bit earlier. I apologize, we were trying to get through everyone's questions, so I know that we had you buried there, but if you wanted to go ahead and unmute and ask your questions as well, or I can uh, kind of read them one by one if that's the way you'd prefer to go. Ryan, I think that the previous question um, was my question, okay. which was, is there any way to consolidate or, you know, lessen the footage being allotted to the bikers? And I myself am a, am a biker, so I'm not trying to cause problems for them. But could it be shifted where some direction is going on Belmont or some we're, we're just more condensed and then everyone sort of gets their way? But it sounds like that's not an option. Got you. Um, and I'll go ahead and see because this is a question that's uh, been repeated a couple times uh, from uh, Brian and Diana Losek uh, from several folks. Uh, why is this decision being made? They want to know why it's being made in the context of a survey and instead of rooting in uh, parking studies, technical data, and expert opinions. I understand there's no crystal crystal ball, but this type of forecasting uh, is in the closet in terms of analysis. So I, uh, do we have an answer for that as well? Basically, we are trying to ensure that we are being as transparent as possible with getting public input and making sure that the public is involved. We know we're not going to be able to make everyone happy um, but we're trying to provide the best possible project that we can that incorporates as many features as we can to improve safety um, and improve mobility in the area. But we want to make sure that we are incorporating the input of the people that are going to be impacted every day. So the final decision won't necessarily be based fully on the survey, but it will definitely be a consideration point. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, I don't see any other additional hands raised. Let me see if I can find some other questions that we may have not addressed. Oh, Kimberly, uh, if you'd go ahead and unmute. Um, thank you. I um, live close to the stoplight. One of the things that I wanted to bring up was something that hasn't been talked about yet. Um, I live near the stop line at Richmond and Matilda. And since they put that stop light up, that light shines through my bedroom window 24 seven. So I ask you kindly, please do not do that to the people on Del Mar by having a flashing light cr on the crosswalk all the time that uh, this is a neighborhood full of families. We do live, <laughs> eat and sleep here. And, um, you know, besides all the parking issues that have been addressed, I just think it's important that the city realizes this is a community of great neighbors and I don't want to inconvenience anybody with a light in their bedroom window all the time. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, and I do see, uh, I do believe that there's still 
uh, or at least based off of Kevin's comment, there's still some confusion or might not uh, have been fully answered on the garbage issue uh, since they, they've mentioned that they don't necessarily have usable alleys. Do they put, would, if the, the parking option was reduced, would they have to just put cans at the end of the driveways? Would they do them in the street? How would that exactly work? Do we know? That will be something that we would have to get the final determination with our sanitation department. Okay. Let's see here. Sorry, I'm scrolling up through. I'm going to try to find a couple more questions. And then if anyone didn't have any other specific questions, just in regards to everyone's time this evening, we'll, uh, we'll have to close it out. But as we said before, if you have any other specific questions that might take a little bit more time or require some nuance uh, more than we can address in a chat window or at the meeting itself, uh, we'll put up Chris, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and putting up our contact information as well so that they have our email addresses. And as well, we'll be we'll try to post all updates about the uh, project coming up as well as this meeting recording. You know, fingers crossed everything on the technical side of things uh, goes up. So the meeting recording will go up as well, as well as the uh, presentation. So we're going to try to post updates to that site link. Um, but I did see one more with a hand raised. Uh, actually, this is, yeah, Brian and Diana, and I see y'all had several other questions as well, so I appreciate that if you'd go ahead and unmute. Yeah, just real quick, I wanted to follow up on the uh, the response around, you know, the, the survey, and I think your comment was that you're trying to gather feedback from those that are impacted most um, in regards to this decision. You know, that being the case, has there been a thought to creating and getting responses of a survey specifically for residents that are on Richmond that are going to be impacted by this decision directly the most parking no parking you know everything that goes along with this decision the residents of Richmond are those that are impacted most is there a way to drill down and get feedback from that group because the survey right now I would argue is not taking into account those impacted most at, at only 16 point whatever percent less than 50 people on the survey. I'll jump in real quick and just say that we that just so you know it, many people did door knocking handing out flyers the city did it there were two separate private groups that literally went to every single door met with the person or gave them a flyer or dropped off a flyer. I don't know what else that they can do. I, I'll let them talk, but I just wanna make sure that that gets said. It wasn't for a lack of effort to get civic participation on this street. Yeah, no, and I, and I think had someone not done that at our home, we wouldn't have heard about it either. And, and you know, maybe, maybe folks are indifferent to it, but it just seems like there's a lot more voices being heard that are not on the street than are. And when everyone keeps going back to the survey results, the survey the results, the survey results, it just doesn't seem like it's encapsulating, you know, those impacted most, as, as you said. So I'll leave it at that. Well, and, and one of the changes we've made with the survey, as I indicated, is that an email address is going to be required. So that should eliminate some of the duplication um, on survey responses. We have made a change in the question on um, your, relation, your relationship to the Richmond um, Avenue project. And we have added the option of I live on Richmond um, for this next survey. So that is an option that people um, can select. So hopefully we'll get better information on folks that actually live on Richmond as opposed to the within two blocks, because that is still an option as well. Um, you know, we've advertised the meetings on Nextdoor. We've advertised them on the city's website. Um, as was indicated, we know folks have been out there knocking on doors and doing a lot of publicity, um, you know, for these meetings. You know, we, we've used every resource that we know how or that we have in, you know, this time and age as far as technology to get the information out regarding these meetings and regarding the surveys. So, you know, we've really tried to make sure that we got the information out. 
and you know 317 responses even if or 30 30 some of them were um duplicates you know a total of 277 responses on a survey is an astronomical number of responses um it was a lot of a lot of information and a lot of data we do not typically get that number of responses on a survey so i i think we did a pretty good job of getting the word out um hopefully the second survey that we do um you know the folks that live on richmond will indicate that they are on richmond and that they will you know give us the feedback because that's really what we're looking for and i see we have some uh uh, Trian and Seth, I think we we got you earlier as well. Uh, Kimberly was another hand raised again there. Sorry, no, I I didn't. Oh, I, I, no, no, no worries. <laughs> I appreciate no, it. No, you know, um, I live on Richmond. I don't want the park, you know, my parking or my neighbor's parking taken away. I understand everything. Um, I just, uh, I guess I clicked it twice i'm sorry oh no worries yeah technical difficulties we all understand <laughs> uh okay um from then just going down the list i see two more hands raised again from melanie and michael uh and then with that i think we'll try to close out the meeting after that as well so melanie if you would go ahead just quick clarification if um christine if we if you will um would you for the question about the flashing pedestrian lights, uh, that would not be an ongoing, I mean, a continual flashing, if I understand correctly, it would be the kind that the pedestrian pushes the button to indicate that they're crossing at that moment and then they go off. Is that correct? Yes, Melanie, yeah. you're correct. The, the um, rectangular rapid flashing beacon is a traffic control device that is only activated when someone pushes the button to cross the roadway. So it's not like a traffic signal that is on 24 seven. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure that Kimberly understood that so she didn't feel like you know, there'd be this, you know, bothersome no, I flashing light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotcha. I just didn't want to do what has been done to me, to my neighbors. Yeah. I wish. The stoplight was a stop sign. Understood. But I do, you know, people are taking their lives crossing the streets to get to their cars if parking is on one side. Um, and uh, I'm, I don't know if they'll use that light or not, but thank you. Uh, and then to answer the question about an email distribution list, um, certainly if you email uh, myself, Ryan.Wagner at DallasCityHall.com or anyone uh, of us associated on the contact information page and ask that you could be added for updates in regards to the project. We will try to get those to you as soon as we can, whenever they are available. We do try to post updates on the website when we can as well, but and uh, once again, leaning on Chris here, not to use the COVID excuse, but COVID combined with some fun weather that we've had in the past couple weeks has uh, made things more complicated for everyone. So we try to make those updates as fast and efficient as possible, but that is going to be the place where we try to get uh, information out as much as we can. But if you would like specific emails to, co to go back and forth whenever we send out updates, certainly please email me and I will make sure that you get added to that list. I know that we, we try to keep uh, David and Nick and some other folks who have reached out to us personally updated on what's going on with the project as well. So I'd be more than happy to do that. Uh, let's see. Try to find one last question here. Uh, here's one that I haven't seen yet and is more of a technical question, so we'll go ahead and ask it again from Michael. Does resurfacing the road include repouring the concrete curbs as well as part of the project? We'll repair curbs where we need to, um, but no, it does not include um, taking out all of the curbs, just basically repairing damages. Got you. And then last question I see here from, and I haven't read from Tom, do we know, how do these current options anticipate slowing traffic? Can you repeat that, Ryan? I'm sorry. 
how do the current options that we presented uh, actually slow traffic or do we anticipate them slowing traffic? I, I'm going to answer this kind of kind of qualitatively um, and see if that gets the answer that they're looking for. Essentially, when we add the curb bump outs, it narrows the roadway in specific locations. Um, when we add the speed tables, it will force people to call, to slow down at those specific locations. When we add crosswalks, it will um, increase visibility for striping in those locations. So when people are actually crossing the roadway, there'll be some additional visibility. And obviously, if we go with option B, and I'm going to bring this back up here for just a minute. You know, if we if we do go with this option B, you know, the travel lanes are narrowed down, which should create some constriction um, for the travel folks in the vehicles. It should slow them down depending on if they're seeing, you know, bicyclists or things like that. But as I said, we do have the curb bump outs that actually constrict the roadway width as well. And even on um, option A, when we have the parking lane, we are still talking about putting bump outs in, in here that will constrict this travel lane. So it's not just going to simply be paint out here. There will be physical constriction of the travel lane at intersections where we have the bump outs. So that will also help to slow traffic down. So between speed humps, um, the bump outs, the actual crosswalks themselves that will all constrict the lanes of traffic and and it should help to slow traffic down. Did that answer the question that was being asked? Uh, I think so, but also someone had to add it to piggyback off of Tom's question. Will we be adding signage to communicate the slower speed as part of it? I do not know that we will be changing the speed limit of the roadway because that is essentially based on the 85th percentile speed that the traffic is traveling on the roadway. So to actually change the speed limit of the roadway, we would have to do a speed study. Which again, they're not being done right now because of COVID and traffic. OK, and I see um, one last hand being raised from Travis Richards, and after that we will go ahead and close out the meeting. So Travis, if you'd go ahead and unmute. Sure, yeah, so Christina, regardless of which uh, option is chosen, mm -hmm. will a speed study be done after that? Because, you know, hopefully, I think that all of our hope is that whichever one we go with, it's going to slow traffic down. And so hopefully that 85th percentile, because I believe right now, I mean, like, will maybe a speed study would show that people are starting to travel slower in which case we could get the speed limit lowered so will a speed study be done and after I the think, are made? and i think that's something after construction is is completed that we can definitely talk about um because it doesn't do any good to do that before construction is sure, completed before we make the changes so it's definitely something that we can talk about after construction um and look at doing if we think traffic has slowed down significantly and we want to change that speed limit, we can definitely look at it at that point. OK, all right. Okay. Thank you for that. Clarification. Fair enough. Yes, thank you. OK. All right. So just one more time. Um, option A. Option B, we're asking you, do you prefer option A or option B in the survey? And if option B ends up being the selected option, do you prefer parking on the north or the south side of the roadway? I'm going to bring this up one more time so that you have the QR codes in front of you for the surveys. You can hit those QR codes right now if you'd like. And again, we want your input, so please tell your neighbors. Have them go do the survey. We want to hear from you. Um, you know that that's why we have these meetings and that's why we talk to all of you and do this because we want to hear from you. This is your roadway. You're the folks that actually drive on it and you're the folks that fund these projects. So we want to make sure that we hear from you. We appreciate your time tonight and thank you so much for all of your input. Again, if you have additional questions, here's our contact information. 
So I hope all of you continue to stay safe. And thank you again for your time tonight. We are adjourned. Thank, thank you. you. The survey info again. Uh, yes, Chris, can we scroll we back go. out? Right there. And we'll uh, and once again, we'll be posting the links to the survey uh, as well on that uh, DallasCityNews.net, Richmond Avenue's Gilman Street project, then the English and Spanish links as well uh, as soon as possible tomorrow, so that everyone has access to it there. And then uh, we'll go ahead and share that blog post links on the neighborhood next door as well. So there'll be a couple different ways that we're trying to get the word out about it, but we appreciate your uh, participation. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all.